This is Jared Parry for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and Forged Irish Stout. Delighted to be joined by European title challenger Gavin Gwynn. Is here, the, finally the shots come. This Friday, your call against Emiliano Marsili. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, like I was just saying, I just can't wait to get the way in over and done with once that's done. That's the hard part and uh, the fun part Friday night, yeah. You posted the picture at the start of this week. You were near enough on weight then. Yeah. So yeah. the weight, I'm assuming, has been a easily made this time it's never easy i'm just i'm like i'm strict proper strict with my diet so i was only a pound over on monday on the check weigh-in so yeah it's just it's all about just maintaining it um obviously that's down to my nutritionist as well and obviously the people who make make my food as well so they make it a lot easier for me like your opponent this weekend, Emiliano Marsili. A uh, bit of an unknown quantity to many. Like I said, he's 43 fights over a career that spanned over 20 years. Uh, the only way that us UK fans know of him is he beat Derry Matthews, the IBO yeah. lightweight title, a few years ago. How do you prepare for an opponent that there isn't much information on, really? And that's it. Like, There's not much information. There's not much footage on him. Um, but... We got all different styles of um, sparring, and um, I'm no mug to the game. I'm this is my 20th professional fight, so I've been in I've been in with all different f fighters. So I'm just gonna go in there and see what he got from round one. Have a little look at him, and um, uh, we just got a couple of different game plans we can go over through the fight. Yeah. So say we've seen the face off there. You were towering over him, and you just said off camera as well, you can't wait to refuel and be ready. Do you think your size advantage could work massively in this fight? Yeah, of course it will, but obviously I, I can't go in there thinking I'm just going to bowl this guy away. He's 42 and no, like he's unbeaten, so i gotta be, um, I got to be on my ball and um, be sharp from me off, yeah, because he does punch as well. He, he have got to have a, a big backhand, so i got to be on my A game, yeah. It was no secret this fight was actually set to land on September 30th in Cardiff on a Joe Cordina card, which never happened. Yeah. So obviously, how frustrating has that period been between the 30th of September date falling through to now? Oh, it's been massively frustrating, but obviously it's been good in a way because I've come out uh, with a deal with Frank Warren and um, Queensbury and it's, it's secured me for two years. So I know I'm with Queensbury and they're going to give me the best platform, the best fights. Um, going forward, yeah. You say you signed with Queensbury. How did that come about? Because obviously, I think you said uh, after your win over Craig Woodruff that you thought it was going to be match room for two fights. Then Pierce Bids went back to Pierce Bids to fight. That then it was announced you would sign with Queensbury, and then obviously now we're here. How did that deal all come about? Leighton, my manager, he's uh, he worked his wonders, did not he? And um, obviously, I'm an exciting fighter, so people want me on their platforms. Um, and I just asked a big thank you to uh, Leet and really for sorting that out to me and um, yeah, securing me for the next two years. Yeah. Talking about dates falling through for this fight, it was supposed to be a day later than it actually is, just yeah. across the road in the copper box. Where, were you told before that it was moving to your core before it was made public that Liam Williams and Hamza Shiraz had been cancelled? Yeah, I was told beforehand, um, but at the top of the text, it said show's been cancelled. So I was like, shit. Trying to open my phone, but then um, obviously I seen this moved move date and things. So I'm just um, thankful to Queensbury for rescheduling this so quickly, and um, yeah, just massive thank you to them because obviously not fighting for Christmas that would have been a ball ache. But I'm um, I'm so happy that Queensbury have uh, got us this show. Yeah. Obviously, back to your call. Last time you fought here, Luke Willis, your yeah. British title. A big moment for yourself. Now you can go on to the next step and win a European title. How special is it to be in the same venue in which you won the British title? It is massively special. Like um, I tried, tried and failed twice at winning the British title, and then when I'm winning in the York also, it's good for mentally more than anything. You no, know, like I know some some fighters are superstitious, like they only put one but of boot on on one way, like sort of thing. But like. I'm a bit like that with venues and now I performed there and I think I performed really good there so I'm expecting a spectacular performance Friday night, yeah. You say the venue, uh, I was at your fight with both fights with Craig Woodruff yeah. and both times your fans came out in force. Yeah. You expecting a big following from the Merthyr Mexicans this weekend? Yeah, they'll all be up there with the sombreros and uh, cheering on. I can't wait to uh, sh share a good memory with the, with the belt afterwards as well, yeah. 
Absolutely. So, with Queensbury signing for them, they've got quite a good stable of lightweights. Um, yeah. Obviously, sat next to you at the press conference here, Sam Noakes, you two yeah. have had a bit of a laugh, nothing uh, yeah. nothing serious with that one. And then you've also got Mark Chamberlain, who last week uh, beat Arjitam Ramlavs. Yeah. Could you see yourself maybe all fighting each other? We could do, um, but obviously I'm a few fights ahead of them. Obviously, the fighting for the EBU title, the proper European title, so... Um, they are a few fights away from that, obviously. Me being British champion as well, like they're going to have to fight um, each other or fight a top-level British fighter to like sort of fight me, sort of thing. Like I, I, I'm pushing on now. Um, I just I'm looking forward to fighting for this European title on Friday. Now that's all my thoughts are on is winning this on Friday, and then uh, we can talk about big fights later on. Yeah. With the two names I mentioned, though, uh, Chamberlain and Noakes, if they were to meet, who would you be backing in that one? As I just said to Dev, no, I think Sam wins that one. Um, I think uh, Mark Chamberlain gets hit too too, too much. So, um, yeah, I ju- I'll just pick pick Sam for that one. But it, it, it could go either way, do you know what I mean? They're both big punchers, so it's just whoever catches who first sort of thing. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, I think that'd be a great fight for the new year as well and uh, a barnstormer of a build-up. Like, yeah. Sticking once again with the signing with Queensbury, they had some brilliant nights with Liam Williams not so long ago yeah. back in Wales. Yeah. Do you think you could be the next one to bring Queensbury shows back to Wales? Uh, that's the plan. Obviously, that's all I'm looking forward to is Friday night, but we got a show booked in for early next year, so i got to win on Friday night. <laughs> Can you give us any more information on that show yet? No, no, no. <laughs> No, oh, brilliant. Well, finally, then, I just want to ask a message to everyone who's coming to see you and a message. And what can we expect from Gavin Gwynn on Friday night? Um, just a massive thank you for to everyone coming up, spending their hard earned cash to come and support me. I just can't thank you enough. All my sponsors, I want to thank as well. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Um, and to expect, you'll probably expect the same old Gavin Gwynn, Merth and Mexican, pure violence. Brilliant. Gav, we wish you the best of luck and thank you for speaking to Boxing Social.